Good morning. Good morning, Hope Christian Church. It's time to get ready for service. Amen. Praise God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, Hallelujah. that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so I may honor you. With all my heart, I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name forever. For your love for me is very great. Amen. You have rescued me from the depths of death. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that we have to serve you once again, Lord. Let's be humble as we come to your throne of grace. Thank you, Father, for uh, this time in our service, Lord, where we just um, get our hearts prepared for what you have to give us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives, Lord God. Change us, love us, complete us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, before we start worshiping, I just want to read Psalms 113, uh, 1 through 9. Praise the Lord. Yes give, yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Yes. Who can be compared with the Lord our God, no. who is enthroned on high? Mm. He stoops to look down on heaven and on, on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the ch childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Mm. Praise the Lord. Thank mm. you, Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole world with holy thunder and leave us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you will bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in of all his brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Jesus, I've heard a thousand stories of what think you like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love the dead of night, cause you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am, because you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, hallelujah. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. And love so undeniable, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I can and hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love you're a good good father who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, 
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. That's who I am. It's who I am. Because of you. It's who I am. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh. Yes, yes. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. So you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Bring it all to be the storm surrounding me, let it break at your name yes. still call the sea to still the rage in me to still everywhere at your name Jesus Jesus 
you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Oh Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Breathe Call these bones to live Lungs to sing, singing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence me, oh Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name, your name, your name is a lie that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a lie forever lifted high. Your name. Cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence me Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Your light. Your light. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus, the name above all names. Yes, Lord. The name that is worthy. For in you all things began. For in you all things were created. Apostle Paul wrote to us in Colossians, letting us know that you existed before anything else and you hold all creation together. Jesus Christ, you, (laughs) your name, is also the head of the church, which we're your body. You're the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. 
So you're first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in you. And through you, God reconciled everything to himself. Yes. You redeemed it. You brought it back. You reconnected it. You made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Jesus, it's your name that we worship. Jesus, it's your name that restores us. It's your name that brings us to wholeness, brings us back to holiness, that takes our brokenness, our sin, our woundedness, our darkness, our evil, our selfishness, our pride, our bitterness, our anger, our our inner flesh, our worldliness, Lord, and you bring it back because of your son and his name. Yes, bring Jesus. it back to this place of holiness and cleansing, you, Jesus. Lord, Thank because you, of your Jesus. blood. And so we worship you today, Lord. We, we now we take pause to take communion, to remember you're dying on a cross for us. As you had that last meal, that Passover meal, Remembering from the ancients of times during your time, remembering that God, Father God, you made a promise that death would pass over those who are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And you taught us in that last supper, that Passover meal, that these two things that we hold, the bread and the cup of fruit of the vine are your body and are your blood. The body of the lamb sacrificed for us and the blood of the lamb spilt out for us. If anybody needs communion to take it with us, please just go ahead and raise your hand. Let us know. We'll be glad to get you some right now, but let's I'm going to let you take this at your own time. After I pray, in case you want to know, you have to peel off that top little layer to get to the wafer of the bread. And then you peel off that little magenta or purple or whatever color this is, other foil to get to the cup. And so, Lord, we thank you for remembering you, Jesus, and your name. Thank you, Jesus. Remembering your body broken. As we break this bread, remember your blood spilt to wash us clean. Dying for us, so you paid the price of our sin, pouring out your blood to give us a new contract written in blood of everlasting life through you. We thank you, God. Thank you for this redeeming through your son. Go ahead and take this at your own time. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You're everything, Jesus. You bring us light in darkness. You bring us love inside of this brokenness. We thank you, God, for loving us, touching us, living in us. May your name, Lord, your sweet name, 
be the love that we have to give to the world. In your son's name we pray, and all God's children said, amen, amen. Praise God, everybody. Amen. Give Lord praise. Yes. Thank you. Sweet, sweet set today. Amen. I love the dynamic duo. We've got Batman and Robin up there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Nice and simple. How is everybody doing? Good. Good morning. Everyone okay? Everyone good? Good. It's okay if you're not, actually. It's kind of funny. We ask that question. We're supposed to be, hey, it's all good. It's like, you know what? God is good, but sometimes, you know, we're, we're, we're not. That's fine if that's where you're at today. Honestly, if that's where you're at. Um, that's why we're here. Here to love. Love God together. Be loved by God. And so uh, if you're visiting with, uh, with us, I hope you, when you came in, you grabbed the bullets. And it's got a card in there. And it's real important and valuable to us to let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, what's going on in your family, maybe a simple prayer for a family member or yourself or, you know, someone you know or someone you love. Let us know. And, and if you're watching online, please let us know that as well, because uh, we like to see God's love pour out through us and to other people and love joining with God in prayer. Amen. 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 And if you want to know more stuff that's going on in the church and in, in your program, there's a link there and get onto our website and uh, you can find out what we've got happening throughout uh, throughout the body of, of the church. Uh, coming around the corner, uh, we've got uh, camp this week. We've got, um, at the end of this week, we have our youth heading off to camp. So, yeah, praise God for that. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. We got, uh, we're joining with other churches. This is our custom. We like to partner with other congregations. And we've got, so we're gonna be doing, uh, going to be doing that for our teens this weekend. And so we're excited about that. Um, also, uh, we've got uh, around the corner, Coming up, beginning of the month, just a reminder: we're going to have our, we'll have our men's breakfast uh, next Saturday. Um, not, not, excuse me, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, and then uh, at, at the beginning of the month. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And, and please join us in prayer anytime Tuesday mornings, and at the end of our service time, after after we get done with our time together today, you know, feel free to gather around and uh, pray for each other, Amen. or uh, join a little prayer circle that. Juanita's got going on, and we'll pray for the community, pray for our families, pray for God's love to pour out through us and to help change the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, hey, I want to I continue on in, in, our, in our study of, of being devoted to God, and I've got a quick little story I want to share with you. There, were, um, there, there, was this, there was this cowboy that moved from Texas to Montana. And when he got there, he, you know, wanted to, make, you know, just kind of follow his normal routine. And he, he found his local bar that he was going to attend and, and make his own. And so he goes into this bar and he orders three beers, three draft beers. And he takes them and he sits off to the side of the corner and he, and he drinks them by himself. And he gets done with them and he then goes back up to the bar and he o- orders another three beers of, of, from the bartender. And the bartender says, you know... Those beers, they get a little flat and a little stale, you know, if you have them all at the same time, you know, it'd be easier if you just, you know, order them one at a time. And he said, well, I've got this tradition. Um, You know, I know I'm new here, but my other brother, I have two other brothers, and one of them moved to Arizona and one of them moved to Colorado. And every time, uh, we, we decided that every time that we would go to a bar, that we'd order another beer in honor of them because that's what we like to do. And so I just, you know, kind of a way of honoring and my brothers and the fact that I'm not with them right now is, you know, I ordered two other beers. And bartender, well, that's a pretty cool way to commemorate your relationship with the brothers. And so, you know, sure enough, you know, time goes by, this guy, this becomes his neighborhood bar and he's there all the time. And the regulars see him come in all the time. And he's always getting three mugs of beer. Well, one day he comes in and he only gets two mugs of beer. And he goes and sits in his corner. And, and people noticed that. And they thought, oh, my goodness. Something must have happened to, to his brother. And, and there was silence in the, in the room. And the bartender went up and said, hey, I, you know, I, I don't want to interrupt your grief or anything. But I couldn't help but notice you just got two beers today. And so I just want you to know it's just, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm sorry. And, and he goes, oh, well, I'm not in grief. there's nothing wrong. It's just, you know, my wife and I, we finally became devoted to Jesus Christ, and we thought, well, you know, I should stop drinking, but it doesn't affect my brothers at all. (laughs) 
All right, just <laughs> cute little funny story just to kind of bring up the point about being devoted to God. It's probably more than what we think that being devoted to God is all about. And so we're going to take a look at that today. Uh, there's this, uh, the word devotion shows up in, in a huge way in the book of Acts. And we've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks. And in, in the book of Acts, if you turn to Acts chapter 2, in, in the Bibles that we have here uh, uh, um, with us, and if you're at home, please you know, look, look with the, read the word here with us together. And if you're visiting with us and need a Bible, please take this home with you. Even if you got one, uh, take this one with you because uh, we want you to give it away to somebody. Uh, you know, give it to a friend or neighbor or, or put it in another room in your house where it's real convenient to get. But in, in the book of Acts, and, and just kind of give you the scene here, Jesus has rose from the dead. He, is, uh, he has been talking to the followers of, Jesus, uh, of, him, of him for, uh, for like 40 days. And then he rises to go to heaven. As he rises to go to heaven, the Holy Spirit comes upon the followers of Jesus. And, and they're moved by that. And, and Peter preaches this, this great message. And they respond to that. And through that response, in that story, these, these last verses, verse 42, is sort of like, it's kind of like the happily ever after of the story. It is really what it amounts to. It, it, in verse 42, it says, after all that took place, after the Holy Spirit came upon the church and, and Peter gave her a message and they responded, it says, and all the believers devoted themselves, devoted, key word, say devoted, yeah, devoted. devoted, key word to say here today, you know, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions, and they shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day and, and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those being saved. And so we see this, this, you know, this, this message here, this conclusion, if you will, uh, uh, to the story of how the church started, how followers started to live and follow and live out being a Christian. And we see you know, that they, they continually grow. They're devoted to this teaching. They're, they're devoted to community. They're, they're devoted to caring and sharing with each other. They're, they're devoted to connection with God and, and, and prayer and, and, and connection to God's spirit and moving out. And we talked, you know, we talk, we've been talking about that the last couple of weeks, but there's this key thing that we can't ignore, and that is, in essence, the, the buildup to this response of devotion took place because of what happened in verse 37. Look in verse 37. Now we know that the Holy Spirit came upon the church and, and Peter's you know, talking to many who were a part of that Holy Spirit movement and some probably who were not. And in verse 37 it says, Peter's words pierce their hearts. Yes. Say that together. Pierce their hearts. And they said to him and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Now, now, now Peter goes and explains, well, get baptized, receive the Holy Spirit. And they do. Many respond to that. And then they do this devotion thing. But I, you need to take note, though, that the devotion of the feet, the devotion of the behavior doesn't pl take place without that piercing yes. of the heart. Amen. Amen. And those two events, being pierced by the heart and being devoted, are, are very much have this commonality of the movement of the heart. Amen. To be pierced by the heart, the original language isn't, isn't just to be sort of uh, pricked. You know, when you, you, when you go get a blood test, they give you that little, you know, sometimes they give you a little metal thing and it hits your finger. You know, if you ever go to give blood, 
it's funny to me, I don't like it. You know, the, of all the pain, I don't like it when they prick my finger. I, I don't mind that I've got an IV in my veins for, a, you know, for 15 minutes. That doesn't bother me. But it's, you know, it's the sensitivity of, of all your nerve endings on your end of the finger that just pricks it. That's not the word here. It's not, it's not just a little prick. It's not just like a, a, a needle that goes to a balloon and, 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 and pops it. The word piercing means to go all the way through, to drive down, to carry itself all the way down, such that they were moved in the heart. They were pierced in their heart. They were broken in their heart, which shows us this specific truth about being moved by God. You can believe something in your head, but it may not change your behavior. It may not change how you walk. It may not change what you're devoted to. But if your heart is moved, you will change. If your heart is pierced, you'll have motivation from the heart to go and walk a different type of life to be devoted to something. And then we see this word devoted in, in, in verse uh, 42, and that, that's a great word to break down as well. It's a compound word in Greek, and it means to, to go to something that is steadfast strength. So let's just kind of break that down a little bit. Many of us are devoted to many things. Some of us are devoted to a particular sports team. Sometimes we're devoted to someone in life that we love. Sometimes we're devoted to our husband or our wives, right? But sometimes devotion is more than just I'm going to act in obligation for or I'm going to act in dedication to. Well, let me give you just a, a primary example. In my life, I, I like to consider myself devoted to my wife and devoted to my family. And many times, out of obligation, I have said no to things that I have wanted to do. Honestly, it comes up every year. My college buddies call me up. Hey, we're going go to you know, we're gonna go to the Bears game in this town again. Do you want to come along? Of course I want to come along. Of course I want to go and hang out with my buds. But it doesn't fit in the budget. It doesn't work for the family. I'm devoted. So out of obligation, many times, I, I'll say no. Even though my heart wants to, I'll, I'll say no. But in this, in this word devotion of to be moving towards steadfast strength, it, it shows us that devotion is more than just movement because I'm supposed to. Come on. I'm moving towards something that's making me strong. Stronger. I'm moving towards something that is steadfastly making me stronger. It's never going away. I've heard it defined this week by Michelle Obama, actually, describing her marriage to Barack Obama. And what she used in that description was that I like a strong partner, and he likes a strong partner because we're a team. That means we challenge each other often, and sure, we butt heads, but I like my team to be strong. And if my team member is winning, then I'm winning. My team is winning. And so to move in marriage, a devotion in marriage is to have that I have a team member who's strong. I, I, have, a, I have a, for me personally, I have a wife who's very strong, Amen. very strong in many ways, in ways that I'm not strong. And so I want her to win as she wants me to win. We're moving towards a steadfast strength. So we see this devotion that, this, that, that they had. It's to move with the Spirit of God because their heart is pierced. And, and the one thing I want to break down a little bit more today is out of those four things that they're devoted to, teaching, fellowship, sharing in meals, and a prayer, as we categorize those things as sort of continually growing, community, caring, and connection to God through prayer. I want to break down teaching. I want to break down teaching. And next week we'll probably break down fellowship and we'll go along and, and break down some of these others as well. 
But as we look at teaching, the thing that we want to notice about that particular word is that it's, it's, it's not just a, a verb, but it's a verb in the tense of it's continuous and ongoing. Yeah. It doesn't stop. Yeah. It doesn't say they devote themselves to the lesson or to what was taught once. It says they were devoted themselves to the ongoing lessons, the ongoing action verb of what was being taught. And, and so we see this, you know, we see that particular truth uh, in Scripture f- throughout the Bible. You see it in Romans 12 when Paul is writing to the church in Rome. He says to them, you know, do not conform any longer to this pattern that the world has. But be transformed by the ongoing action of the renewing of your mind. By renewing your mind, by reading scripture, by understanding truth, by having our mind involved. It's not just the heart, but it is our mind involved. Then we can test and we can check out and we can prove out what God wants to do. Because this is a living, breathing document. These aren't just words on the page. The scripture tells us that this is inspired in spirit by God. And so he speaks to us through the Bible and teaches us live and ongoing things that are live and continuous for us to grow. Amen? Amen? Amen. Anyone experience that in their lives? Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. And, and, and so we see that, and we, and we see Paul also you know, promote this teaching of, of, of ongoing learning. When he, when he writes to the church in Colossae in chapter 1, which I happen to have read when we were closing out our worship, let me, let me read this to you. Um, Colossians chapter 1 talks about the value of learning. Uh, Paul says this. I, I want to read the whole context. Uh, when I'm glad... When I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. He's referring to how he was persecuted. He's referring to how he was rejected, that he suffered because he was telling people about Jesus. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it's been revealed to God's people. You know, just kind of break that down a little bit. He's saying, I'm okay that I suffer because not everybody used to know this, but now God's telling people about it. So it's worth it. For God wanted them to know that the riches... And the glory of Christ, the, you know, the riches, what is in heaven, and the glory, the, the, the full spectrum of, of just his power and his love of Christ for the Gentiles, that this secret, it, it, was, it was a secret, but now Christ lives in us and he gives us assurance of sharing his glory. <laughs> I hope he catches appeal in his heart here. He's saying, you know, to, he's saying to us, he's saying to these people that he loves and he's willing to give up his life for, for Jesus. He's saying, I want you to know it's not hidden anymore. It's out there. It, it needs to be revealed. And so he says, so we tell others about Christ, ongoing, again, not told, Not one and done, but we keep telling other people about Christ, warning everyone and telling everyone with all the wisdom of God, all the knowledge he's given us, we want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. He's giving up his life to tell people and to teach them about the love and the power of God. He doesn't want the world to miss this. He doesn't want us to miss this. God doesn't want us to miss this. This is ongoing. And he wants the ongoing nature of it so we can be presented to God perfect in him. Not perfect by ourselves, not perfect by the world, but perfect inside of Christ. 
He's making this appeal of his whole life. Do you, do you get his yearning and, and his desire here is to, to let people know about this love that God has for us yes. through Jesus. It's a strong appeal that he's making. And, and it, it obviously, obviously the, the ongoing nature of, 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 of learning, you know, it comes through his word. It comes through being in groups. It comes from studying the Bible on our own. Yeah. And, and just a quick little plug. We put them, excuse me, for walking off camera for those of you out there. Uh, yeah, give me a daily bread. Thanks, bro. Just need one. So, you know, we put these on, on your chairs. You can get this version online as a daily email to you. If, if you are new to studying the Bible, this is a great devotion that word devotion, to move towards something that's ongoingly strengthening you, that you can read this every day, and it's a, it's a word of God that you can think about throughout the day. And I, I'll guarantee you, not only will it strengthen you, but at some point in time during your week, you're probably going to run into somebody that yeah, you, you just know, yeah. wow, what I, what I heard, what I learned from God two days ago— is perfect for you. Let me remind you of this, or let me tell you about this, because it's alive and ongoing. It, it's an enduring strengthening. And, and so I highly want to encourage you for that, obviously. Uh, and, and, and what I also want us to emphasize and understand, that of all the teaching, if you were to, if you were to pare down the teaching of what the apostles are talking about, it pairs down to the key and core fundamental truth that God is love and he loves you. God is love and he loves you. The core teaching is all about love. If you look at, if you look at scripture, the, the, the word love in the New Testament, just the New Testament, is mentioned over 265 times. Uh, I just for myself, I just I printed up every one of them. I found a website that, that had them all. And, and, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He so loved us that he gave his son. That whoever would believe in him wouldn't perish, but would have everlasting life. Because God didn't come into this world to condemn it. He came to save it. And, and another great truth that, that was taught by, by the apostles and, and, and Jesus is that, you know, it, that pursue love. Paul talks about that in Corinth, to the letter in, in Corinth. He says, pursue love, chase after it, go after it hard and fast. Yeah. He, he talks about it, of course, and we hear of it in marriages and wedding ceremonies that, you know, love isn't, isn't, isn't boastful, it, it, it's not, it, it doesn't keep score, it, it, just, it just is the greatest gift that one can possibly have. And, and it was interesting to me uh, that, you know, in all this greatness of, of, of love, you know, our humanity, we, we, we all want love. Amen? Yeah. I mean, we all do. And you would think that because... We all do. It would be easy. You think that we all, because we all want love, it would be easy to be taught that. But, it, but it's talked about so much. It's reminded to us, and it's, it's hammered home for us. You know, that this love, this great love of God, is, it, it, it's, it's not something that's just like trying to reach the moon. It's within our grasp. But it goes against what we've experienced in the world that goes against our hurts, it goes against our wounds, it goes against our bitterness, it goes against our anger, it goes against our pride, it goes against our selfishness. There's, there's a great story. It's a fun little story of, of how the angels were reporting to God one day. And, and one of the, and they were telling him how things were on earth, and one of the angels said, God, it just doesn't look good. And, and that, you know, I'm, I'm, and, and God said, well, what doesn't look good? He goes, it looks like there's more evil and more pride and more selfishness than there is good in the world right now. So God said, all right, well, go down and take a survey. So they, they 
angel went down and took a survey, came back up to God and reported, God, I, I think the, the data shows that it, it's not looking good. You know, there's 55% of the people out there are, are actually evil, and, and 40% of them are, are prideful and selfish, but 5% are good. The guy said, well, let, you know, let, let's, let's check on that. Let's double check. Go send another angel down. He went down and he came back up. Sure, same thing, 55% evil, 40% just selfish and prideful, and 5% are good. And so God said, oh, man, that, I, I've got to do something about that. I, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll encourage the 5%. And so God decided to, to give every, all the 5% a text that would encourage them. And do you know what the text said? You didn't get one either, huh? (laughs) We're all in the 5%. That's a little moaner, huh? All right. We're all in the 5%. We all need to be taught. We all need to be taught. Thank God for grace, obviously. Amen? Amen. But here's here's the key lesson. Here's the key teaching about it. The The key teaching about love, the foundational teaching about love. Is Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. In the middle of that chapter, Jesus, go ahead and turn to that. I'll give you a little bit of the background. So Jesus is at the end of his ministry. It's getting close to the the end of it. He's in Jerusalem. He's getting ready to take the cross in in a few days. And, And while he's getting ready for that, the Pharisees don't know that. The, the religious leaders who are seeing his ministry grow, who are jealous, who aren't trusting that he's the son of God, that think he's blaspheming, thinks he's just trying to, you know, to lie, and, and, and they're threatened, and, and so they're trying to trip him up. And in, in part of that being tripped up comes this inquiry in verse 34. And it says here in the word that when the Pharisees heard they did silence the Sadducees, the the Sadducees were religious leaders, small sect, but they were part of the religious establishment uh, that was part of a court that the the government of Rome said, you guys are in charge of of making sure your religious sect and and the uh, the Jewish people are staying in line. So they had some power. So they're saying Jesus had had been in a challenge with them and and kind of shut them up in the previous verses. And and so the Pharisees heard about that. And so one of the Pharisees, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him, tried to trap Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, he said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is your first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Now here's how this breaks down for us in in terms of devotion and and being devoted to love. This this teaching uh, about, about love the, the, the core teaching, the, the Pharisees were asking, what's the most important law? Now, let's, let's, let's be mindful of the context of that question. That's an Old Testament thinking. of The way I relate to God is commands, laws, rules. If, if, if I stay in the lane, I don't get whacked. And Jesus' response with is establishes and opens up a whole different context if you if you really stop to take a look at this he says it's a commandment but the commandment is love it, it, it's agape agape is the greek word that was used in this tra- in this translation that means unconditional means with without question Now, in Old Testament commandments, they were rules. If I follow these rules, I'll get blessed. And what he opens it up to, what Jesus is opening it up to, is that it's beyond just follow the rules. It's about this relationship 
of the heart and the relationship of agape with God. All of you, all of who you are should be involved. Your heart, your mind, your strength, every fiber of your whole being, body, mind, and spirit are involved in the love relationship with God. And the natural outpouring is that it's going to spill out to other people. And so there's, there's this component of this teaching of love that is basically saying, you got to get your heart pierced and, and, and be in love with God and how he loves you. That's what we're devoted to. That's what's giving us everlasting, steadfast strength is the love of God, the relationship that we have with God. And so, yes, of course, walking this out, you know, means that, of course, we want to be involved in groups studying God's word. But we want to be in a daily devotion. But it's not just a head knowledge. It's a heart engagement. These are love letters. These are, these are words from a God who created all things. He created you before you were in your mother's womb. He knows the steps of your days. He knows where you're going. He knows the beginning and the end. He, he knows everything, and he wants the best for you. He wants to love on you with his spirit. And when I say the best for you, I'm not necessarily talking about the best materialistically. I'm talking about the best of your body, of your mind, and of your spirit. The best of oneness with God. That lasts forever. And he desires that. And so, of course, we want to we be able to approach a devotion with God. Starts out with opening up our heart and saying, pierce me. Pierce my heart. Show me my sin. Show me where I do separate. Show me my pride. Show me where I ignore you. Show me my selfishness. Show me my bitterness. Show me who I have not forgiven. Pierce my heart with your love that can love people that have done some wicked things to me such that I can be at peace that you love them. So I can be at peace that even though they may have hurt me and I can't be in relationship with them, I have peace that you love them and you're working in their life just like you're working in mine. To be opening up, to start there with that teaching and then to to fall in love with these daily letters, fall in love with this word, fall in love with what he wants to show us about us. And then, of course, to have that love flow out to other people. Love your neighbor as yourself. We'll talk maybe more about that ne- next time. But even for now, even for now, I, I know many of us are involved in that. And and spiritually, we want to be involved in that with you. And so um, I, I want to invite you today, if, if, if last week, if, if during, the, just reflect back in the course of last seven days, was there somebody that you loved on with God? I mean, not just normal habit, normal routine, not just I made a meal for, you know, my kids or, or you know, I, I, you know, took my daughter's car to go get fixed or whatever. I mean, not, not, not anything like that, but I mean, something from a spiritual point of view where God's love pierced your heart and nudged you a little bit. Maybe you called someone. Maybe you texted someone. Maybe you instant messaged somebody. Maybe you, you were just in casual conversation with someone at work or a neighbor, and, and you encouraged them to say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. And you did pray for them later that week or that day. Or maybe you were bold and you had courage and, and you felt God's strength and you prayed for them right then and there. It's those people that I'm asking you and inviting you, if you would let us know who they were, 
Or if you just want to say, I did that and pray for me in that relationship, that's what we would like as a congregation to be able to pray for this coming week. That the seed that you planted of love would grow inside of that person. That's important. I mean, yeah, it carries over into loving our neighbors uh, and, and, and it carries over into the fellowship. But let, let's remember that it comes from that devotion, our own heart being pierced by God. My life's not my own. My, with my whole heart, my whole soul, my whole body, my whole strength, my whole mind, I love you, God, and use me in any particular way you have. And so that's my prayer this week is that somehow God's spirit would move through us, our, our devotion, our, our, our going to, you know, our moving towards his steadfast strength will pour out to other people in this world. Why don't you join me in a prayer? Father God, Lord, I, I, I just ask, Lord, the, the these words that are yours, uh, Lord, I, I you know, I, I, I kind of ask for a miracle, really, Lord, because uh, I, I would ask that somehow you'd use, like, my words and and uh, the, the way that you kind of outlined this to me and how I explained it. Lord, I, I pray that, you know, uh, to us, to these people that I love, Lord, that you love even more, I, I pray that that you would, would move us, Lord, that you would pierce our hearts, that you, you, you'd pierce us like, like, like Paul desired, Lord, is that we would know, we would, we would grow in this, Lord, that we, we would grow in this love of you and this knowledge of your love, that it would pour out, God. Uh, we don't want to, I, I, well, I, I don't want us just to believe I don't want us just to, to even, to, I, I don't want us just to, to be here and love on each other, though I, I need that so much. Lord, I, I want this love to pour out. There, there, there are people that don't know you. There are people that are, that, that are just getting beat up by the world. There, there are people that, are, you, you look at the world and it, it just doesn't look good. But you're good, and so help us, God. Help us in some way to, to, to be bold, to be bold in teaching and, and instructing and telling, and not just to follow, but to influence. And we need your everlasting, steadfast strength. Thanks for helping us to move towards it. Pierce my heart every day, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's children said, amen, amen. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. Bless you greatly. Again, um, if you know, you're visiting with us, please let us know how we can pray for you. Um, I also want to say a prayer right now over our offering. There's, a, there's an offering box if you want to join in, in contributing to what God has amongst us. Uh, you know, we, we, we believe that everything comes from God. It all belongs to him. And so our finances were his to begin with. He gave us the wisdom of how to get a job and the creativity inside of that job. And, and he pours out the money to us. And so it's part of the flow is to receive it, thank him for it, and to give it back. And so that's what generosity is all about is we give it back and God's kind of up there above looking around going, hey, who's out there giving my money away? Because I'll give them some more. And that's not a get rich quick scheme. This is about a love thing. If you're willing to be generous, he'll, he'll give more so you can continue to be generous. So that you're going to get more love because believe me, you, when you give, you, you receive more than you get than the person does sometimes. So let's just pray for that. Lord, we, we thank you for the, that promise of what giving is all about for you. And may these dollars that we give, Lord, may they support the missionaries that, we, that we've got out there in the Philippines and in, in Turkey and in China. And, and help us, Lord, to, uh, to be wise in, in trying to get uh, our, our, our 
ch- our young man, Neil Bartua, the Chinese missionary who's feeling a call to get to the United States. Help us to figure out how to support that, Lord, and help us with the work in Liberia. Help us with the work here in this community, Lord, reaching kids and families, and, and, and Lord, um, just <laughs> break through that spirit of fear that's still keeping families and kids away. Lord, break through to make, it, make us safe so we can gather. And thank you, God, that for the work that we're able to do with the homeless and those who are really struggling that want to get better and want to reach you. These dollars are for you and for that purpose. And thanks for letting us be a part of your love. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children said, amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you again for coming. Have a great day. Praise God. Everybody. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways.